loading. Okay, here we are. Good morning again. Uh, welcome to today's stand up. Um, but before we get started, how is the energy level? Were you enjoying the jam that was playing? Are you ready for today's schedule? Like, how is the energy? Any reactions? Okay, I, I'm seeing one person reacted. That's amazing, Cheru. How about others? How are we feeling today? Okay, okay, that's amazing. Thank you for the reaction. I can see that we are energetic and actually that's all we need today just to be able to end it um, like in good shape and also to complete everything that we are supposed to be doing today. So yeah, let's go through our normal stand up. Anyone who's ready just to share their updates about uh, how was yesterday, what are you planning to do today in regards to the schedule? And also, uh, any blockers have you faced so far? We are here with Rehmet, and as always, we'll be having any discussion to any points of discussion or any question or any blocker you want to raise. So let's go ahead and raise our hands. Let's go, let's go. Okay, I'm seeing Ahmed. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yesterday I was in the understanding phase. So I read about uh, airflow and how I can install it. But uh, I'm wondering about uh, the data. I didn't see it yet. But uh, should we clean it first or we load, uh, we load it to Bostigers first, then we do the cleaning. So if uh, any explanation on this part will be good. Okay. Thanks, Ahmed, for raising that. Uh, Rahmet, any support? Hi, good morning. Um, could you repeat what you said? Sorry. Uh, I uh, was asking about the, uh, the data. Should we clean it first, then load it to uh, the database, or load it first and then do the cleaning, the cleaning part? Yeah, I think should clean and it then. Yeah, the cleaning should come first, right? Uh, okay. Uh, how this it, change? Uh, it doesn't matter how you want to go about it, but you can do. It both ways but i'll okay. uh, clean it and then store it to the is that okay that seems more logical yeah. thank you okay. okay all right let's hear from martin good morning everyone uh my question is uh um i wanted to ask like Are we um pot so pot is post postgres is supposed to be the warehouse we're using to load, uh, do we transform the data first or we load it into postgres then we transform it from there so i'm wondering like are you are we uh, uh extract transform then load or we're doing extract load then you transform it from from there and then my other question is is that uh yeah th those are my questions for now that's, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, you can load it, then extract and transform it from your database after you make the connection. Is that clear or? Yes, 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 that's clear. Um, okay, great. Did you say extract okay, it, just... then load it? Or extract load and transform. Um, excuse me, Rodas. Did you say extract load then transform? Yeah, yeah. You say that. You say that. Yes, Martin. Yeah. Yes, Martin. Oh, yes, Joseph. 
sorry. Okay. I think Rahmet is having a technical issue, but she's draining again. But in the meantime, we go ahead. Who's again ready to share? It's okay just to first tell us how was yesterday, and also you give us a little bit of context of how you met that how you faced that blocker, so that um, the technical team know how to help you like clearly. Okay, Joseph. Oh, yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, yesterday was quite different. Um, working with Airflows, um, the whole content was completely new. Um, but uh, it's been interesting uh, learning new material. However, I'm still grasping my head around the whole project for week two. Yeah. Uh, all right, Joseph. Yeah. And uh, so that, that was the only blocker you also faced, the one you were asking for clarification. Um so far um, I haven't faced any blockers. I'm still uh, reading the content and trying to understand it. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. When you face any blocker, of course you can put it in all week two and then we have a discussion. Um you know, as all, just to help you find out. Okay, and then we move on to who else are ready to share? Okay, we have two people on the line. Let's get more people on the line. Okay, keep raising your hand so that we save time of calling up names. Okay, that, that's amazing to everyone who has read our uh, hands so far. So we are being from Jabez, then Kumi, and then Daisy. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, yesterday, I was trying to understand the, the, the concept uh, on the on airflow. Uh, and I think I get some some knowledge and uh, I a little bit figured out how, how to do it. Uh, that's my my question is on the uh, what does it mean uh, take uh, stack flow diagram what does that mean and also data lineage uh, dvt uh, these are the two that are uh, uh, we need to submit these two on uh, wednesday so can you give a little uh, description on that thing Okay, I've noted that. Okay, I've noted that uh, Rahmet will respond when she gets here, but we can hear from Kumi. Yeah, yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, yesterday, I think I have gone through a lot of materials. Well. I'm still struggling with some part of the technical content issue, and I'm talking about the airflow. Uh, I think I started by trying to uh, connect, like, init the airflow with uh, my Postgres, my Postgres database, and. But I think finally I have done that, but I find it easier to use um, the literature. People, most people use Docker Compose, so I finally tried to download Docker Compose and trying to follow the step and set up the environment. But the problem is that uh, it's like when I try to connect, I'm using Ubuntu Linux, so when I try to connect on the web server, uh, it's not working. Like the, I first create a user that I was using for the first part. But when I use, when I finally download Docker Compose and set up the environment, when I run the server and try to log in, I can't, like it's saying that it's not recognizing the, the new user that I create to, to log in. 
So I'm still struggling on it. If I can get some help, that will help me a lot. Okay, and anyone knows how we can uh, pop Kumi? Okay, Rafmax, yes. No, it's just to answer the question that I cut off before. You have to extract it for and then load and then transfer. That's the LAT process. It's like that. Hope that's clear. The trains I think we were asking before. Oh, I don't understand. I don't know if I... no, it's just for the question. I don't know who was Wanpra or Javis. I think you guys were asking before I, I drop down. You have to extract the data, then load it, then trans then do the transformation after that. Just to finish right. my answer before. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, Kumi, I. I interrupt when you say half of the, I just heard half of what you said. So maybe if that's a question, maybe you can ask me again. I just joined. Yes. So I have uh, what I was saying is that I I was trying to use just only Docker at the beginning, and so I create a user admin that helped me to connect to the web server, and I finally find that people are used to. Uh, Docker Compose online. So I try to use um, Docker Compose, but when I create the new user to log in, it's not working. Like I can't log in into the web server anymore. But the other uh, user that I was using is working. I don't know why. So maybe you can share the error that you're getting on the Slack to be able to help you. Uh, oh, I'm not getting a specific error, just that when I run the server and the scheduler, I can't log in on the server. Like it said that so the, that it's not recognizing the credential that I'm using. It's for the airflow, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's better to see what you are seeing because it should have worked. Um, maybe uh, on the slide, on the drive that is shared, th there is a slide that I put the installation using the Docker Compose airflow. Can you Could you check that out? See if that works for you? Yeah, I'll check it. I'll give it on today's tutorial, but if you want to also catch up beforehand, you can check out the slide for orchestrating okay. airflow. Okay, thank you. Pascaline, you're there or? Okay, Rahmet. Um, Jabez also had a question, but I can let him repeat it by himself. Jabez. Jabez, do you want to ask before we proceed? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, we can. Yeah, uh, I was asking about the text Slack flow diagram. Can you just a little bit describe what uh, that means and the uh, uh, data lineage DBT? Thank you. Uh, regarding that, Javis, could you uh, postpone that question for the tutorial next with Imtena? Okay, sure. Yeah, it's better on that tutorial to ask it since it's related also. Okay. All right, then we can go to the
Uh, hello, everyone. So I have managed to install Docker desktop for Windows, and I also extracted the data. So my question is, I, I ended up with following the, the instructions in the drive, I ended up with two data frames. So does that mean we'll have two tables in Postgres? And also, uh, how can we load the, the data frames to Postgres? So basically the L in the ELT framework, yeah. Uh, sorry, Daisy, what was the first question? The first question is, will we, so um, following, when we extract the data, we end up with two data frames. The first one with the four columns, the four unique columns, and the second one with the, the rest. So does that mean we'll have two tables in the database? And also, how do we load the, the data frames to Postgres? Um, one moment, one minute. Okay, all right. Empty now. Uh, yes. Okay. Did you get the question? No, I haven't. I didn't hear the question. Sorry. Can you repeat? Can you come again, Daisy? Uh, yes. So I was asking uh, if anyone could share the steps uh, for loading the data into Postgres. And also, does it mean we'll have two tables in our database? Um, okay, so I mean, like once you like you are able to read the data into like a, a table, that's what when like basically when you'll be able to just load it into the database. So you have to figure out how to like, yeah, there is a, a way to do this is to divide the data into two tables because like, um, uh, as we talked about before, the, the data you have is uh, comes into in uh, in a form that like not each record has the same number of columns, so that's why you need to like handle them in a way. So um, like uh, what what exactly you are facing difficulty with? Let me ask you this. 
I'm not facing any difficulties yes, yet. I wanted to know like the steps to follow after uh, extraction. I mean, once you read, like, uh, you have to like uh, manage to read your data first. Like, um, like uh, the first the first step is to try to understand the data exactly what fields do you have, uh, and then like. Um, and this is this is something that you can just read on like uh, the the website that provides the data itself has a description of the data so you can read there like what is the data exactly and then uh you can read for example you can read the data just line by line just use an just um, a simple um uh like it's a csv file but you cannot read it with pandas by the way because it we have this issue that it's like not equal number of uh, columns so you can just maybe read, read it line by line and just like divide your lines in a way uh that uh, uh will end up uh, you will end up having like equal number of, of of columns in each so just to explain even further like each because each um each record is describing a particular um uh vehicle okay so and there is like four columns i think have this there is specific uh information about the vehicle and its type and like um so these are just like fixed and then uh the re remaining which are varying number of them is like uh repeated six by six which six six fields each six uh, field is like a timestamp where uh like some uh some some stuff are measured for the for the trajectory of the, with the vehicle so like the velocity i think and the acceleration and like um I, I don't remember right now what is what are there so i need to look it up but okay so some information are like measured as a particular timestamp so one option you have and this is just an idea is that you can like uh take the first four columns and put those or all in one table and the remaining and you you can divide like the remaining fields for each record by six so like you will have like rows for each timestamp and and timestamp okay and then if we can make a color uh, like a table that is just like uh, um like have six columns basically or uh adding an identity for the track so you will, will have like seven columns maybe i'm just saying like the idea i don't maybe i'm making a mistake on the number of, of columns exactly but yeah this is this idea does this, this make any sense to you daisy yes okay good uh any other questions shayla Over to you, Shayla. Um, hi. Um, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes we can, we can hear, hear you. Hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so what the progress I have made is I was able to extract my data, and I was able to um. I was able to extract it, and that means creating those two tables, the two tables with the vehicle information and uh, the trajectory information. Um, and uh, I was able now to put, to move it to the Postgres SQL. So I have two tables from I have two tables in the in the in my database now. So my question was first of all, um, there's something you've mentioned about those. Okay, now I have vehicle information and I have trajectory information. There's, there's another set of data that I haven't used. The one that was described that it is divided into, it, it repeats itself after c every six columns. So my question is, first of all, is that, how how important is that information? Like, do we need that information for this exercise? And then um, two, um, what I've been struggling, my blocker right now has been struggling with um, installing Docker. Every single time I install Docker, I keep getting an issue, but I've asked it on Slack and I'm yet to work on whatever I've been told. Then um, when it comes to the dashboarding and on Redash, my question is, what exactly are we going to be visualizing? Does it mean that we're also doing an EDA for this data? So yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. 
Okay, so the first question you asked, I don't even completely get. So you're asking like if there is a part of the data that you can discard or some 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 is that what is that was that your question, Sheila? Yes, the yeah the data is has I think the ten columns that you've spoken about the ones that four describe the vehicle information and the six that describe um the trajectory information. Then after that, the other columns that don't have titles and according to the explanation from the where we downloaded the data set, they're saying that um those columns they are they repeat themselves six times. So I I don't know like that's those are the columns I'm asking. Are we supposed to discard them or? Do we need them for this analysis? Uh, okay, so maybe we can we can do this. Uh, I don't know. It seems like it's not clear for people how this data is structured. So, what you are not getting is that yes. So you have ten columns that have uh, titles, right? Names. Uh, sorry, but um, the four, the first four are uh, so okay. Let me just um, maybe can share my screen for a bit to just one second. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, here, this is a description of the data. Um, um okay anyway so um so we have as i said like each row represent a single vehicle the first and columns of the first row includes a column name so this is just the first row we just have the column names and then when you go to the remaining rows it will have varying lengths um basically have varying number of, of, of fields these fields starting the first four have information about the peak the, of the vehicle so there is a like a track id which is like an a, like a unique identifier they have the type of vehicle the total distance traveled in meters and the average speed so this is the first four columns then you have like from the the remaining columns which are many these are like um are like uh they record what they record um at a specific time there is the record of uh the latitude and the longitude or where the vehicle is so the location of the vehicle at that specific time and then you have like uh the speed um sorry so uh yeah so there is a, like a, um sorry there is a speed the instantaneous speed at a specific time and then the acceleration both in longitude and, all, and later, lateral acceleration so these are like what you have the location and speed and the acceleration so these are five fields and then you have at a specific timestamp which is recorded as the last one the last last field of them so if you have um i should have like uh, like showed you what is exactly like the maybe open the file uh to show you what is a um I could, okay I could, I wait look a second yeah so maybe you can have it here somewhere um and i actually see it one second, sorry, it, it's, um, yeah, okay. So it's a very big file, but let's try to just see it here. So as I said, uh, so let's take the first column, first, sorry, first row, just to, uh, so the, the first four fields are as explained. These are like uh, the, the ID, the type of the vehicle, it's a car, the total distance traveled and the average speed um so okay and then the remaining this will be the longitude latitude the speed the acceleration like in two directions 
at the time zero. Then after that, you will have, uh, you see what my screen, I don't know if you can see my screen. Um, a confirmation will be nice. So, but anyway, so this will be the latitude, the longitude, the, the speed. So I'm just reading the field by field. So field separated by this um, um, semicolon. Uh, so this will be the longitude, latitude, speed, the acceleration into direction at this time, which is 0.04. So after like 0.04, um, is it in second? Maybe. Um, uh, okay. Anyway, it's a, it's a time. So after like a, a 0.04 with 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 whatever unit of time it is and it's so and then so on and so forth like this each six are a measurement as like the six fields like this is all eight so you cannot really discard them what i'm saying is that they are repeating so you have to somehow fold these fields into like um like so one 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 approach Sorry, one approach is to put, um, sorry, I'm like, I hope that I'm not confusing you even more, but you can put like the four, four, the first four fields in one table, all of them, like for all the records. And then for the remaining fields, you can take, of course, the ID of the, of the vehicle, just to keep that. And then you can record like six, put them in just one row, the next six in the next row, and and so on and so forth. Like the, the columns there will be latitude, longitude, speed, longitude, acceleration, latitude, acceleration, and time. And then we will, we will have several, many rows for each vehicle instead of just one row. I don't know if this is clear in any way. Does this clarify things in a, in a, in a way? So I can always see the code you use in populating the DB if possible. Sorry? Can we see, can you share us the code you use in populating the DB? I saw a file, something Yeah, like that yeah, yeah I can show you that, yes, uh, quickly here. Uh, and so that we can, uh, so let's say, or oh, let me just see you like here. I, I hear like I, for example, here I split just to, to use this data, an example, I split the data into like, I read them, um, let me just show where it starts. So okay, it's not very clear here. Uh, so yeah, so I open each file and read the lines. And for each line, I what I did is that like um, okay, so there are uh, uh, how to say so I um, okay sorry um, sorry so just starting from I, I read the lines and then I split each line by the separator which is a semicolon here and then. Um, uh, and then basically I took uh, the first few up to four, which I, like I'm here, I'm defining this four. So up to the first four fields are appended to a list. And then uh, the next, for the next, uh, for the remaining columns, I had to like uh, basically put them into like um, six, uh, six by six, uh, sorry divide them by six so i will take the first to like uh to ask like who like uh, the six uh, i will take them six fields uh, uh together and append them and then like take the next six fields and append them basically so it's just like really straightforward um, maybe it's not very clear here because this is like a function defined with like uh, for some reason i'm defining it with optional like or um the number of fields for vehicles and numbers for trajectory six but here i mean i hope this um is this does this make sense to you or 
Okay, good. Uh, so I hope everyone like knows how to like in a way at least an idea how to deal with this data. Um, Sheila, uh, you had other questions. Sorry, I don't remember um, the remaining questions. Sorry, <laughs> can you repeat? It's fine, but like um, even before we go to the other questions, so what you have actually said is um, I need to like put like have a single vehicle is going to have like different different data for different times for exactly. longitude and latitude okay um so and then now that brings up another question does it mean um is there can i use another way to load my data is it loading not loading to read my data which is not like like for me the way i read my data was i i made a list but then my list had clearly defined um column names for the columns that will be for this data frame and the columns for the other data frame. Does it matter how I define my, my how I read my data? No, it's, it's not, it's not really, uh, it's fine. Like as long as you are getting all the data, you're not really discarding any part of it. Um, you can come up with other ways to do this. You actually can, you can choose to divide your data into like uh, more tables if you want. I don't know, like uh, there might be, I mean, uh, what I showed you is just one option, uh, like how I approached it. But there are other ways to do that, definitely. One, mm -hmm. yeah. So one approach I think is to just like forcibly reading the, the whole data into one table by telling. I think in pandas there is a way to just tell. I um, uh, to tell it to feel like uh, it is, it, you're going to get like a really huge. Uh, data frame, but you can tell pandas to like to basically um, uh, equalize the number of of columns to the maximum number. Okay, you have, and then for as for for vehicles that they, they don't have all of that num the same number of columns, this is going to be filled by like a null values null values and then you have but then you're going to have like a huge table um with like a, a huge no, a very big number of columns and still when you want to put it inside your database it doesn't make sense to i would say it doesn't make sense to to put that table di directly in your database because like um uh, it's huge and it has a, a lot of redundancy because it has a lot of null values Anyway, but that's another approach. Maybe you can also like load it in pandas and deal with it there. I'm not, for example, the code I showed you, I'm not using pandas at all. Um, yeah, okay. Um, okay, thank you. So the other question was, when it comes to Redash, um, I didn't quite un understand what exactly we'll be visualizing. Um, does it mean we're also doing another EDA? Are we doing an EDA also in this project? Um, not exactly ADA. You're not really doing um, really uh, not not in any way extensive like what you were doing before. Like, because what you're doing here is just just kind of trying to um, you're doing like the data engineer role of like you're just handling the data, making sure that you're consistent and like um, you're like checking the quality of the data. Uh, and then you're going to do some transformations of the data, but like you're not really um you're not really like uh we can do some ADA but like really light, not nothing extensive. Uh, um redash, you can use redash to actually just look at your data um in, in a in a basic way, but like uh maybe um I'm I'm not like uh like to, to answer the question better, maybe it's going to be explained later on. Um, uh, that where you're going to be exactly using, like how you're going to be using Redash exactly. But um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to. I don't have like the the perfect answer for that for now. But but yeah. So just to clarify, you're not going to do, be doing any extensive ADA on the on your data this week. Um, okay, thank you. Then the last question, I'm really sorry. The last question, um, can you please um, give me an example of one type of transformation that can actually be done for this project so that I can be able to understand the transformations I'm supposed to work on? 
Okay, yes, uh, a transformation that you can do in your data. You think about like if you want to do, um, suppose, yes, you, that you divided your data into tables, a couple of tables, okay? And then think that um, as a, like you want to use this data for analysis and you want to join the tables together and aggregate them for some, uh, like for whatever, for a, for a vehicle or like on a, for a specific column. That is a transformation. Transformation here is joining tables and aggregating, for example. This is a transformation. We're going to see like next in the next session right away how, because we're going to do be using DBT to do that. And um, so, yeah, the transformation is a transformation in, um, maybe it's a different, in a different sense than before. Or it's not really different, it's actually the same. But it's just like how you like changing, um, uh, thinking of like uh, maybe, uh, like from an analysis point of view, I'm preparing the data for, as for that in just in a basic way. Um, is that clear? You know, um, is that clear? Yes. Okay, yes, good. that's clear. Thank you so much. All right. So next, I think we're running, uh, maybe so are we over time uh, not so much uh let's see next person abu Bakr. Uh, okay thank you <laughs> finally so <clears throat> uh, uh we actually i tried the uh, loading the data and cleaning it and thing so my problem is on uh, uh, Docker using the Docker Compose. So uh, I tried setting up the Docker, uh, like uh, the DBT, Airflow, Postgres, and everything. I think I used the resource found on uh, the Airflow, their documentation. So I think they, uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, images, for example, Airflow, Airflow init trigger. Uh, web server and everything so i tried running that so uh, it's uh, become really difficult with my pc to actually cope up with the in, in like the intensiveness of the it take it take a lot of uh, cpu usage so it become harder to work on other tasks so i tried using another docker like just using uh, uh, the only the airflow package so i think it's probably working so shall i use the official one or shall i just continue with the single image that says airflow um okay so uh, first of all let me ask this which operating system are you using uh, it's uh, on uh, windows subsystem for linux it's okay. WSA. It's on Ubuntu. The yeah, Docker is on Ubuntu. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, um, well, Docker doesn't work directly on on Windows. Um, okay, so as long as um, just to answer your question, uh, if the single image is working better for you, just use that. That's fine. Um, if there is no specific, uh, you are told to use Docker uh, whenever, or it's easier just to use Docker because the installations are simpler. But because you just need to install Docker and then you can run everything basically. But uh, it's that uh, sometimes, yes, it becomes really resource intensive. And if you don't have a very powerful machine, um, it, it can be easier or better for your specific situation to either like use um, instead of using all installations through Docker, only one, or you can like disregard Docker at all completely and then install everything directly. So what you have is you have Airflow and um, DBT, Postgres. You can install all of this directly on your, uh, for example, WSL. Um, you can install that there directly there and work there. So you don't, not going through Docker if Docker is a problem. Um, I think uh, Redash is also going to be installation installed through Docker, and I think 
it's um yeah so okay. just like we're not at that step right now but uh so sorry so on uh, on that note so sh shall i just uh, containerize only the for example the folder for example i will create a folder called airflow airflow in dockerize that only or execute that only on docker uh so oh, when you say containerize um sorry so i, I um can explain again I mean, so you are you are trying you are running airflow in docker right you're running the uh, airflow yes, container? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the all of them are running currently. It's working, but uh, because all of them are wor working, some of them uh, I, uh, for example, DBT. I'm not currently working on it. So since it is on the container, it's still running and being resource sensitive. So what I'm saying is, uh, shall I just uh, give up on Docker Compose and do all on on folders? Like, I mean, they're, they're on them separately. Yeah, um, separately okay. On only. They're only. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. So, as I said, if it's easier uh, and it's going to be like, I mean, when they are in the Docker, comp they are all running there is from there coming together, right? You got the file, the Docker Compose from an official site. So they are connected to each other, right? If you install, like for example, if you are running Docker, uh, sorry, if you are running Airflow through Docker, while you have Postgres and DBT installed locally, sometimes the connections, uh, like issues happen, like uh, and connecting them is not really, um, I mean, people face problem when connecting them like that, like that. But if you figure it out, you can you can do that. Um, and as I said, if uh, it's uh, if running Docker at all becomes resource intensive, or resource intensive, you can try to install everything directly, uh, and that should should work also. Um, okay, so Hillary. Okay, good morning. Um, so uh, so far, I've been able to uh, to install Airflow in, in Docker. Uh, it was a challenging part. So. I spent more hours on that, and uh, so uh, I've, I've also been able to get the, to load the data and uh, save it in database. So okay. for me, uh, the challenge is yet to uh, where do we save the the data? What I, I mean, so Airflow, the Airflow we are using Docker. I was using Docker Compose. It comes with the Postgres with its Postgres for metadata. Uh, in yeah. So, yeah so do i use that for the warehouse or do i have to create another postgres container for the warehouse um yeah so both are options like you can do both uh, you can do either so like you can um but uh, uh loading your data into um Uh, I mean, the short answer is that yes, you can use uh, also the Postgres that uh, Airflow is using for its metadata. You can use that to install to in, to store your 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 data. Um, if you figure out how that, you can also use a different like um, a locally installed Postgres to 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 store your data. These are valid options. Uh, the the issue only comes like, or the difference comes in how you are going to connect Airflow to the database because when, or rather, um, actually, it's already connected to it, so you don't, don't have that issue. It's just like you uh, you have to figure out how to um, uh, to connect your your post like to to the database inside the Docker. You have to figure out. Um, the volume how to like how to make your data um persistent so i think it should be should already be there in the docker compose but like if you understand like how volumes work um in docker um you should be able to do that easily so i'm, I'm talking about using the postgres in docker to, to store your data so yeah um, yeah so, um, 
perhaps yeah i was able to do that so i have, I have just one more question uh, for the so extract for the extract part does it mean like we uh, okay the 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 specific processes in each stage is confusing for extract uh, i'm assuming it is to to retrieve the data from sql files the, from the csv files and for load probably to save it to database and transformation using dbt like uh, the one you've showed us yes that's exactly correct your your description is correct okay extract yeah you are you're correct exactly um any other questions or should we uh do step joseph i don't know oh uh, yeah so my question is should we do any data cleaning before loading or does uh, uh the data handle all this well actually that can be like um uh yes you can you can do data cleaning before loading the data into your database yes um if you want to clean it from like uh, null values you can also when you load your data into the database if you define uh okay if you define your um uh, schemas in the database correctly you can also like impose uh like conditions on on your data so that uh, some fields are not null, some fields are uh like have uh, specific types or specific values so you can you can actually um you, you do you do both you can clean the data before loading it and also do uh, these conditions because um yeah so your answer yes you can do clean data cleaning before okay um as uh, so, well um can we uh, i'm hearing uh, people talk of two tables is it possible to work with all this data in one table uh, uh guaranteed that you formatted it correctly so I mean, if you, if you, you, yeah, if you put it in one table, you're have you're going to have redundancy, whatever you do. Um, you're going to have some redundancy, but it's possible to have like one table. Either like you can have one table where, um, where for example, it can be just one table made of ten columns, and then you will have the data regarding each each vehicle really repeated um for each timestamp so they are going to repeat the the information about um, the vehicle which is the type the speed the average speed and total uh, tra uh, tra uh, anyway these three uh, or four big uh, fields are going to be repeated much more time so the short answer again because we're out of time yes you can store your data in one table or multiple tables one table is going to have you're going to have redundancy as we talked yesterday about normalization, usually when you, you use more tables, you are reducing the redundancy. So you don't have a lot of repetitions or a lot of null values, for example. But it's possible okay. to have one table. It's up to you okay. to do that. Okay, understood. Uh, we're running out of time, so let's stop here. Uh, I'm sorry sorry for if, if you have more questions, let's, we're going to have to just move to the next sessions next session sorry and then in that next session we can ask more questions after we end if we finish so uh i'm sorry that we have to stop now, now right now so uh thank you everything we can stop the recording and and this